This problem comes from Cambridge University's entrance exam, otherwise known as STEP. Today, in fact, is the day where loads of students across the globe would have received offers from the University of Cambridge. So if you did the interview round in December, uh, today you would have found out whether you've got an offer to study there or not. But there's still one last hurdle for math students, and that's completing this exam known as STEP. And this problem comes from the 1998 paper. Let's have a look at it. We've got IAB being defined to be the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the a times 1 minus t to the power of b dt, where a and b are at least 0. Part 1, we want to show that i of ab equals i of ba. Part 2, we want to show that i of ab equals i of a plus 1b plus i of a b plus 1. And then part 3, we want to show that a plus 1 iab equals b ia plus 1 b minus 1, where a and b are positive. And hence, we want to calculate the value of IAB where A and B are positive integers. Interesting. Um, and what I think is quite cool, and what I guess this follows the standard recipe of lots of step questions, is that the parts are all related. And this part three here, the final part, is kind of putting together all the things we've worked out. And so we should, in theory, end up with a formula for this integral for positive integer values of A and B, no matter how big they are, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, let's dive in with the first part. Show that IAB equals IBA. So if we swap the letters around A and B, this thing stays the same. Okay, you may wonder how we do that. The trick here is to basically somehow say, well, how could we swap the T and the 1 minus T? Well, the way to do that is by a little substitution. If we let U equal 1 minus T, and we calculate this integral again, it's going to be the integral from, well, the lower limit when T is 0, u is going to be 1 minus 0, which is 1. And when t is 1, u is going to be 1 minus 1, which is 0. So the limits flip around. We've got t to the a. And if we rearrange this, we get t equals 1 minus u. So it's going to be 1 minus u to the a times 1 minus t. But t 1 minus t is u. So this will be u to the power of b. And then dt is simply going to be minus du. Like so, so times minus du. Cool. Uh, here's a nice little trick if you've not seen this before. If you do have a negative sign and a definite integral, you can use that to swap the limits around. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to 1. So I've swapped the limits from 1 to 0 to 0 to 1. And then this negative du will just become du. And I've got 1 minus u to the a um, times u to the b. But I'm going to write that the other way around. So u to the b times 1 minus u to the a, like so. And now the crucial fact here is u, because this is a definite integral, u is simply a dummy variable. So I could just as well replace u with any other letter here, x, y, z. But in particular, I could also replace it with t. And if I do that, I get the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the b times 1 minus t to the a dt, which is precisely i of b a. And so we prove, the, well, we solve part one here. Um, so the trick is to just do a substitution. And the motivation here to do a substitution is, well, you kind of want to swap the t and the 1 minus t, and doing this substitution allows you to do that. OK, let's look at the second part. We want to show that i of a, b equals i of a plus 1, b plus i of a, b plus 1. OK, how do we show this? Well, broadly speaking, and this is a good thing to think about whenever trying to show that one side of an equation equals another. It's normally easier to start from the messy side and then do some simplification on that to get to the cleaner side. And here, the messier side is this. It's not super messy, to be honest. It's just got a lot more going on. So there's a lot more meat on the bone, a lot more that we can do with the right-hand side uh, to get to the left-hand side. So let's start with the right-hand side here for part two. We've got i of a plus 1b plus i of a b plus 1. And if we just write these as they're using the definition of them as integrals, the first one is just going to be t to the a plus 1, 1 minus t to the b. And if I add on the second one, well, because they're both integrals between 0 and 1, I can just bring them all into one integral. It'll be plus t to the a, 1 minus t to the b plus 1 dt, like so. Now, probably the obvious thing to do here is factorize this. To simplify, and we get the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the a times 1 minus t to the b. And then in brackets, this guy here is going to give us a t, and this guy here is going to give us a 1 minus t. But very conveniently, this bracket here is just 1. And so we simply get the integral of t to the a times 1 minus t to the b, which is precisely i of a, b, which is our left-hand side.
great. So that's how we get part two. One. So for the final part, we need to think about how we're going to get from IAB to IA plus one, B minus one. And we've also got these constants B and A plus one floating about. Well, what I notice here is that in this second, on this right-hand side, I've got the A going up to A plus one and the B going down to B minus one. And I think about when have I seen before where something goes up and something else goes down at the same time. And in particular, we've got polynomials. And I know that if I differentiate a polynomial, its degree goes down by one. But if I integrate a polynomial, its degree goes up by one. So here we may get an idea to integrate one of these things and differentiate one of these things. And well, where do we do that? It's an integration by parts. So this is the reason I'm gonna try and evaluate this integral by parts. And I can see here, the question is telling me for the t to the a, that to go up by one, so I should be integrating that. So if I do u equals one minus t to the b, because I need to differentiate that. So du would be b times one minus t to the b minus one, times minus one dt. And if I let dv equal t to the a dt, then that would mean that v is one over a plus one t to the a plus one. This is just the standard setup for integration by parts. We're then going to have the i a b equals so u times v, so one minus t to the b times t to the a plus one over a plus one from one to zero or zero to one minus the integral from naught to one of uh, v d u. So this thing times this thing, but because of the minus one here, I can factor it out and make that a plus. And then I'm gonna have b over a plus one as a constant out the front. And then I've got t to the a plus one times b, sorry, one minus t to the b minus one dt, like so. Now this, thing in the square brackets here equals zero. And we've just actually got to be a little bit careful to justify that. You might just think it's obvious because I've got one minus T when you plug in one, that's zero. And when I plug in T, it's zero. But you do actually have to be careful that the powers here are not zero or negative because then you could have some issues with zero to zero or zero to the negative number. But thankfully, we don't have to worry about this in this part because we're told that A and B are positive integers uh, or well, they're positive for this bit. So they are positive numbers, so b and a plus 1 are therefore positive. So if I do 0 to a positive power, no matter what that power is, it will always be 0. Um, so this square bracket will be 0 minus 0. And this thing in the integral, well, that's just simply i of a plus 1, um, b minus 1. So this will be b over a plus 1, i of a plus 1, b minus 1, like so. And then, of course, just multiplying both sides by a plus 1 gives us the result here. Great. And then we're told, hence calculate the value of i, a, b when a and b are positive integers. So now, not only are we allowed to assume that a and b are positive, but also that they are integers. Okay. And the word hence is used here, which suggests that we have to use, well, this part, the thing that we've just shown, but also potentially earlier parts as well. So hence is a really good word to look out for in step exams. How can we solve this? Well, we just use what we've just worked out. So i a b is equal to b over a plus one multiplied by i a plus one b minus one so broadly speaking if you want to work out the value of i a b you there's some constant at the front multiplied by well you just increase the a by one and decrease the b value by one and so therefore this thing here i a plus one b minus one should be some constant multiplied by i of a plus 2 b minus 2, so adding 1 to the a value and taking 1 away from the b value. So this is going to be b over, oops, sorry, b over a plus 1 multiplied by something, we'll work out what this is in a moment, times i of a plus 2 b minus 2. Well, what is this in the, in the, in the fraction here? Well, you can just check for yourself, but if you think about what we had for i, a, b, the b just came here and the a we added 1 to to get on the bottom, so this should be b minus 1, so bringing that b minus 1 there, and then a plus 1, we're adding 1 to it, so that becomes a plus 2. Okay, but then we can just continue this inductively and get something like this, just right here. So this will be b, b minus 1, and so on, all the way down to 1 on the top, times a plus 1, a plus 2, 
all the way up to a plus b multiplied by i of a plus b um, comma zero. So we just kind of keep doing this inductively uh, until we get to the b value being zero. And at that point, we have to stop because we can't continue to go because we can't use this result anymore because the b value zero is no longer positive. But up until that point, uh, this, this second value here was positive. And now we can actually directly evaluate this using our definition up here. So if you simply plug in up here, the first entry equals a plus b, and the second entry equaling zero, you can work out this integral, but just because I kind of run out of space here, I'll just write down the value of it. Um, so on the top here, you've got b factorial. On the bottom here, you've got a plus one to a plus b, which is going to be a plus b factorial divided by a factorial. And this integral here will turn out to be one over a plus b plus one. And so that would be your answer. And if you want to, you can rearrange this or rewrite this as one over a plus b plus one times a plus b choose a. Um, just another way to write your answer. But that would be our solution here. Pretty cool that we can evaluate this integral for arbitrarily large positive integer values of a and b by using this formula. Thank you so much for watching. Best of luck uh, for students who are looking to prepare for STEP now that they've got their Cambridge offers. Um, this year or this kind of season, I tutored 13 students uh, long term, helping them with their Oxford and Cambridge applications. And 12 out of those 13 ended up getting offers. So I'm super, super happy with that. That absolutely super exceeded my expectations. So I'm very impressed with that. And now the final hurdle for Cambridge students is doing the STEP exam in a few months time. So best of luck if that is you. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.